The Australian cricket coach Justin Langer has resigned. The resignation follows a marathon meeting with Cricket Australia yesterday. For more on this, I'm joined in the studio by ABC Sports Editor David Mark. David, as I just said, it was an eight-hour meeting with Cricket Australia. Negotiations ensued after that. Where did they break down? How did he come to the resignation? Cricket Australia had already been talking to Justin Langer about his next contract. He had a four-year contract. He wanted another four-year contract. But it seemed Cricket Australia were prepared to offer him a shorter contract. Now, yesterday during the board meeting, they were obviously discussing the terms of that contract um, and they then said at the end of the board meeting, very briefly, we're going to continue our discussions with Justin Langer. Now, last night, um, the CEO of Cricket Australia, Nick Hockley, and presumably other members of the CA executive had more discussions with Justin Langer. We can only assume that they put to him a contract, which was obviously on reduced terms. That's been confirmed to me by Cricket Australia. It wasn't to be a four-year contract. We don't know the exact length. My my understanding was that they weren't planning to split the contract between, say, the test coach and a, and a white ball coach. He was going to retain all roles, but it was going to be for a shorter period of time. And then at some point after that meeting, he's resigned and his management company put out a statement just a short while ago uh, saying that our client, Justin Langer, has this morning tendered his resignation as coach of the Australian men's cricket team. The resignation follows a meeting with Cr Cricket Australia last evening and it's effective immediately. So for now, uh, the Australian cricket team, they're due to play a series of T20 matches against Sri Lanka next week and then they have a tour of Pakistan in March, is without a coach. Mm. Well, plenty of voices will be weighing into this news. As you said, it's just broken in the last hour or so. The former captain and current coach and commentator, Ricky Ponting, has spoken on radio back it's been a really poor six months i think of the way that the cricket australia as a whole have handled um some of the better people in australian cricket being justin langer and tim payne i think it's been almost embarrassing what the way they've handled those two cases i actually think it's a a really sad day as far as australian cricket's concerned so uh david how would you say cricket australia has handled this yeah, well, it hasn't done a very good job of it. I mean, this issue was always going to come up. Justin Langer had a four-year contract and it was going through till June, but Cricket Australia always knew that you know, come the end of the Ashes was a really good time to either make a decision to, to cut him or to continue. Now, the, the big issue, of course, is that he hasn't had the support of key players, and we know that. Last August, there had been enormous dissatisfaction with uh, his very prickly style of management, and a meeting was held between uh, the then-captain, Tim Payne, the vice-captain at the time, Pat Cummins, who is now, of course, is the test captain, and Aaron Finch, who is the white ball captain. They, had a, they threshed it out with... Um, Justin Langer and told him that he had to tone down. But what has been really noticeable since is that none of the senior Australian players have publicly said that they want Ricky, um, sorry, Justin Langer to continue. Just the other day, I asked Pat Cummins twice, quite specifically, do you want Justin Langer to continue as coach? And both times he refused to answer the question. Now, had he wanted him to continue, he would have said yes. Mm. But the very fact that he didn't answer the question directly and said that's up to Cricket Australia essentially said that he didn't have his overwhelming support. And that obviously creates a really difficult situation for, for Langer. And, but as for Cricket Australia, they had the opportunity to make a decision earlier, one way or the other, to have those talks with Justin Langer and they didn't do it and now it, become, it, it became a very, very, very messy subject, a real open wound mm. that had to be lanced in one form or another. Mm. And as it happens, Justin Langer is the person who's done it. Mm. Well, four years ago he was installed into the role and he was asked to do a couple of things. One was to fix the culture and make the team likeable again but also to play hard, play fair and win. Do you think that he achieved that and what do you think his ma major legacy will be? He definitely achieved that. So he... he he, was, he came in and he, he was obviously a very authoritarian figure, but he did settle Australian cricket, and very much with Tim Payne too. The two of them formed a very good partnership. They did um, sort of get the, the, um, the reputation of Australian cricket back on a sort of a more even keel, and, you know, they were moderately successful. Um, not initially, but they, you know, um, regained the Ashes in England. They obviously, more recently, they won the T20 World Cup mm. and they've just blitzed England in the Ashes 4-0, one wicket away from a 5-0 whitewashing. So he's definitely done his job in terms of improving the reputation of Australian cricket. And his record as a coach has been pretty good. In 27 tests, he won 17, 
uh, lost seven, drew five. It's not bad. The issue has never been about his success in terms of win-loss. The issue has always been about his approach to coaching, his management style. The big criticism of Justin Langham is that he's been seen by the players as a kind of a, a football coach. He, he was on the board of the West Coast Eagles for a long time and very much a hands-on kind of coach, which isn't how cricket has traditionally sort of operated. It's always been the captain's team. The captain makes the calls on the field and so on. And so after that meeting in August, when he was asked to tone it down, he did step back, apparently quite noticeably during the T20 World Cup and to a certain extent too during the Ashes. They were very successful and a lot of people like Ricky Ponting have come out and said, well, based on his success, he should be reappointed. Mm. But you can also look at it the other way and say, well, maybe the, the success came from the fact that he did actually stand back mm. and did less. Mm. And it was the assistant coaches, the likes of Andrew McDonald and Michael DiVanuto, who came to the fore, the players were a bit more comfortable and they performed very well. And just briefly before we let you go, uh, David, obviously the team is rudderless, we've got these series coming up. Who is a likely replacement? You would think somebody like Andrew McDonald in the first instance, he's an assistant coach, would step into the breach. There have been other names thrown around, like Trevor Bayliss, who was a former Victorian coach and coached England, whose name has been put up. But obviously the players are very, very comfortable with McDonald and Divinuto and it would be hard to see why Cricket Australia would go beyond that, knowing that the players are happy. But then it's a question about how much power do you actually want to give the players? Do you really want to go for a worldwide search or give the players what they want? How much control should they have? Have to wait and see. David Mark, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, Catherine.